when you are not good at something, the best thing to do is to make a video. So I'm making a video about how to use this oscilloscope for an RC circuit. So I already have it set up and this is where we want to end up, but I'm going to go through and start over and do the whole thing with you. Uh, so just so you see, I have here capacitor, resistor, and then I have two things I'm going to do. I'm going to apply a function generator across the RC combo and measure the voltage across the, the capacitor. Okay. So um, the first thing first, turn on your oscilloscope. The second thing second, this is, oops, I'm sorry. This is the Hantech DS0, or that might be an O, 2D15. I, you know, I'll be honest. These do a lot more than I need. And sometimes they are in the language of an engineer, and I'm a physicist. So if you've never used an oscilloscope before, this is a voltmeter. This is a voltmeter that collects voltage as a function of time. The end. Okay. So the first thing when you turn this on that you're going to want to do uh, is to plug in your function generator right here. So this says external trigger and we have a B and C cable and I plugged in right there. Now what I'm going to do is I have this on run stop, put that, is I'm going to take my leads and have them both measure the same thing. So I want to look at my function generator output. And the idea is that if I charge the capacitor and let it discharge, it's going to take a very short amount of time. So what I'm going to do is to charge, discharge, charge, discharge using a square wave. So here is my square wave. So this function generator generates an output that we can change and modify. So if I push this button right here, it's going to bring up my function generator settings. And it's a little it's a little, I think you can see that. I think we'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, so right now I'm on square wave. I'm going to go ahead and change that. So these buttons over here are, the, are uh, allow you to, to choose the menu items. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to click that. Now this knob right here allows me to change the type. So I'm going to change this to a sine wave and then I push it in to select. So now it's a sine wave. I could do whatever I want. I could change it to a ramp and so forth. Okay. Now the other thing that I'm going to do, and I'm going to, I'm going to put it back to a, a square wave. And I'm going to change the frequency. So I'm going to click this button, frequency, frequency. And I can just scroll the dial. And you'll notice that if I turn this up really high, it's not going to work right? Because I'm looking for that discharge curve. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is just my, just on my uh, function. Now, I, I do get some little squeezing over here. That's okay. But I'm getting what I want. Let's go ahead and switch my probe channel one to the capacitor. So, so this is uh, connected to channel one. Channel one you'll notice that this is not what I want. I, I want a nice decay curve, but it's not charging up all the way. Uh, the other thing is, whenever you get something like this, it's shaking back and forth, it's not big enough. There is a magic button on here, and it says auto set right there. If I push this, it will scale it to what it thinks it should be. Okay, now the trigger is still not right. What it does is it's adjusting uh, when to, to shift it over. I don't really want to get into that because we just want to collect data. But you'll notice that it charges, let me pause this. It's going to charge this up, and that's a curve, and then discharge in the curve. But I want it to be charged the whole way. Okay, so that means that I'm not giving it enough time. I want to decrease my square wave frequency. So I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to click on wave, and then I'm going to go to frequency, and I'm going to make it go down to, you know, like 50 or something. And you'll notice that, again, it's too big. That's where your auto set button comes in to save the day. You can adjust it manually. That's not what I want. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to frequency. I want to change the frequency. I'm going to scroll this down. So notice now, let me pause this. I'm getting a nice, it's 
charged almost the whole way. I probably need to decrease my frequency even more, but it's charging almost the whole way. And, and I, this is what the curve that I want to look at. Now, in pause mode, I can actually uh, change the voltage setting right here. Right, so I can make it bigger or smaller by rotating that knob. That actually looks pretty good. I like that. I'm going to keep it like that. And I can change the time knob right here, right there. So that looks pretty good, right? Because it looks like it's at a constant voltage and then a constant voltage right there. However, I do want to do one thing. I want the square wave to have, uh, I want this to be down to zero volts. It's not at zero volts right now. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to change it anyway. So let's turn that back on. Turn this on to amplitudes of 1.5 offset. So I'm going to offset this. Oh, it's in, if it's in the wrong mode, I can push this again and it'll move it bigger. I want to move this up so that the smallest voltage is at zero. Oh, I went too high. Right there. So that's, it's turning on and off. That's exactly what I want. Okay. We are ready to make some measurements. Now, I pause this so we can see it. Let me run it, pause it again. And, and again, it's not in the perfect spot, so I can adjust the... Uh, horizontal position of that right there. I don't really care about that. What I want is voltage time data along that curve. And the, the run stop button is really going to help you out a lot here. To do this, I'm going to press this button right here called cursor. And one of them, it's already on there, right? So it's in track mode. That's what you want. Track mode means that as I move that cursor, notice that little cursor right there. That's cursor B and it's giving me the x value of 1.68 milliseconds and the y value of 3.2 volts. So I can move that along as I like, and it gives me my x and y data, which in this case is voltage and time. Okay, And I'm going to move this all the way over here, and then I have another cursor right there. I'm going to click this, and it's going to switch to the other cursor, and now I can, well, that does both of them, and I can move it. I want to put this right here at the beginning right at the beginning of that discharge, right there. So that's A, and then that's B. And you'll notice over here it has BX minus AX. So that's like my origin, right? So this is going to give me my uh, decrease in voltage from that point right there. And so I could add 3 to that if I wanted to, um, but I don't, I don't really need to. And then this is my time. B y, no, BX minus AX is my time, and then uh, BY minus AY is my voltage. And then what I need to do is just switch this back to B. And then I can just scroll this along. I can start up here. Data point right there. I'm going to write down that voltage and that time. From BX minus AX is my time. BY minus AY is my voltage. And then I just keep moving along. Data, 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 data. I'm not doing it because I don't want to do it. But that's how you do it. Okay, so now I can get all my uh, voltage time data and then I can fit that to my either an exponential curve or you could take the log of both sides. You have the data. The, the goal of this video is to show you how to get that data from the oscilloscope. And like I said, I'd just like to remind you that I don't know what I'm doing. So some of the things I say are wrong. However, this video is really for me because I'm going to forget how to do all this stuff. Okay, now there is a USB uh, thing. I, I tried that. I think my, my, uh, mem my USB stick was in the wrong format. I think it probably has to be FAT32. I'm not really sure, but uh, I didn't really play with that too much because I assume we may not have that. Um, this says TFTLD. I don't know about that. I'd like to play around with that, but I, I haven't done that. So there you go. RC circuits, oscilloscope, very basic stuff. Um, you know, sometimes you don't know what you're doing. You just need to start pushing buttons and see what they do. And that's what I did here. So hopefully that's helpful to me in the future. And that's the end. I'll talk to you later.